हेलो असलकुम मुदसर बट अगेन नाइस हेयर कट सो आई एम बैक टू द स्टूडियो एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी वन ऑफ माय वेरी फर्स्ट फ्यू डिजिटल इलस्ट्रेशंस टुक मी अ वाइल टू एक्चुअली गेट बैक ऑन ट्रैक रेस्ट एंड रिक्रूपरेशन वाज रियली नीडेड आफ्टर द लम्स ट्रेनिंग एंड आई होप दैट वी गेट टू गो बैक टू लम्स अगेन टीच द किड्स we are also setting up spaces in our studio space <coughs> for the bulk students bulk of students that are still interested in learning cartoon animation digital illustration in pakistan uh currently we only have a space in lahore so we have to get by we can't actually accommodate 40 50 kids uh for that i guess uh, the campus is uh, more suitable uh until we find a better place so uh let's start with the uh um let's start with the first uh, demonstration on how to draw a sphere uh, mind you this is something that we uh, do initially when we start classes uh, this is how to draw and color and ink a sphere in sai uh majis school mein uh, the school that i'm currently teaching it's uh, scarsdale and there are some international students uh, who are having trouble with using photoshop so for those kids this is a very important tutorial and uh, i don't know the situation in the house uh, the power outages are going uh, a lot so i'm not sure if uh, we will be able to render this till morning uh, but here's hoping uh, also do follow our uh, youtube pages our twitter page our facebook page in case you want to get any updates on other tutorials if you want me to upload other tutorials on concept art character drawings those are also on their way also uh, this is like going to be a regular session so i'll try to upload as many videos on our youtube page as possible uh, in a month um, i can't guarantee any things because uh, there are a lot of places i am teaching and conducting seminars and workshops on the awareness of cartoon animation and comic books in Pakistan so this is going to be one of the very first few videos so hope to see you guys uh comment on it on uh on YouTube and Facebook okay so um i'm not going to skip ahead with the animation sequence or even speed up the video so that the kids uh, in the school actually get uh, step by step instructions so first and foremost we open up file a uh, new file and we set up the preset for a4 page um 300 dpi resolution so that we can print it later on if you wanted to and i'm just going to pause and then play the video recording again so here we are with the airbrush setting so this is the layers panel we have two different types of layer the line uh, line work layer and the basic layer so the difference between the basic layer is that it's a, a raster layer and the line work layer is basically a vector layer so size supports both vector as well as raster images now the beauty about the uh, uh beauty about size is that you can uh, have a very uh, small space and uh, sai has a very small size uh, the disadvantage is that features are also very much uh, reduced I mean, you can't have filter effects and all those other things but the brush tools are amazing so you can see right now the airbrush tool and you can figure out the pressure sensitivity uh, of it and if you use the airbrush uh, it's basically a very well defined airbrush tool and the more pressure you apply the more better it is the more uh loose you draw the more uh, uh, airbrushy it behaves and you can always add in uh, the feature so uh i'm going to now pan the canvas area so the space bar key is used for panning the control plus and the control minus keys are for zooming in or you can use the mouse wheel feature on your uh, optical mouse or uh, wired mouse so i'm going to flip the canvas uh, i just went to the canvas and flipped it horizontally or flipped it uh, counterclockwise so 
every tool every brush tool has uh, a shortcut applied to it uh, i like to use shortcuts so that i i can easily draw so right now i am just uh, created a layer called the rough and I, uh, it's just the rough illustration area so i'm going to show you some brush features of the airbrush tool and this airbrush tool is pretty much really awesome i mean like in photoshop it really takes a lot of time to do the airbrushing so sai is a very ergonomic and a very user friendly interface and it's very uh, uh, robust i mean like it has very small uh, it it uh, takes very small disk space uh, so now i'm just uh, roughly drawing a circle using the pen tool so the pen tool is basically as as is, is pen tool that it can have uh, no airbrush effect so it's just like uh, a marker basically with no bl uh, bleeding uh, so if you want to uh, transform the uh, shape or a layer uh, a complete layer you can press ctrl t or the transform tool uh, that's from uh, it's available on the edit tool you can now use the eras eraser br eraser brush or uh, shortcut is e you can also see the eraser right there at the uh, left side in the middle eraser it has like a rubber eraser uh, visible I have now uh, brought down the opacity of this layer and I have, uh, I'm going to go to the inking layer now. So as soon as I select the inking layer, the tools actually change, the brush tools change. So we have the pen tool. Now I'm going to uh, increase the brush size and show you what the pen tool does. So as you can see, it has numerous points and you can manipulate each point using the shift and the control key. The shortcut features are available and visible in the select button options. There are uh, tons and tons of options like control shift uh, moves the layers and etc. So now I'm going to create another layer and I'm just going to like uh, briefly like maybe like do a loose illustration of an apple shape. So this is something that we'll do in the next tutorial video that we're going to create an apple uh, using Sai. So mind you, this is for kids who have a problem with Photoshop and, uh, we will be using Sai to actually illustrate that whatever we can do in Photoshop, we can do in Sai also. So this is like an Apple illustration that I'm doing and it's a very rough illustration. I mean, you can take uh, some references from uh, Google and figure out some very good uh, Apple illustrations, but this is like sort of like a rough illustration and we can come back to this layer later on. So I'm going to turn this layer off. Uh, these eye, eye icons on the side, they turn the layer on and off. I'm going to write the layer name as Apple reference. <coughs> Excuse me and uh, now i'm going to start inking now the uh, for inking it's always a good idea that you create the ink stroke or the stroke outlines uh, using 16 uh, pixel size or 10 pixel size so i'm going to create like two versions and then i'm going to use the shift key control key and alt key alt key use uh, when you're using the alt key it actually uh, deletes and adds points so since I'm using the red uh, color for the illustration, you can't see the points very visibly, but I'll uh, zoom in and uh, show you that uh, the uh, shapes can be visible. And I'm also going to change the color in, in a short while. So I'm just arranging them and I'm joining them. So control shift and click and drag from one point to the other of two, the two shapes closes the shape. Now the problem over here is that once you actually close the shape from one side, it does not close from the other side. And this is the reason that uh, a lot of the times there are certain uh, parts of the shape uh, that are uh, not uh, fillable. So what I do is that I extend the shape further on and I'm going to zoom in. Uh, uh, let me just fix the points first make it look round or circular in nature and uh, i'm just uh, deleting uh, some points so pressing the alt key deletes some points uh, now i'm going to just do some transformation so i clicked and dragged all the points together and pressed ctrl t and now i can edit this uh, edit the edge point gizmos to make it look, look more circular in nature and i'm going to press the right click mouse button so now 
the right click mouse button is pressed and the entire sequence is deselected I'm just going to change the color from uh, red to black so you can see everything is visible and I'm going to zoom in also uh, let me just show you the color uh, feature this is the color button and I also added a shortcut to the color button so now when I select this whole shape each point gets selected and it is turned red and uh, the points also get red uh, turned red and the line uh, that is following the tangents is also turned red I can easily right click and uh, deselect it or I can uh, edit some points so I've deselected it and now I'm editing some points so this uh, portion seems a bit overlappy overlapping so what I can do is I can reduce the thickness of, uh, using the pen pressure tool I can bring the uh, thickness down to zero or near to zero and then I can move these points together so that it looks like a smooth circle and I can move some of the points using control key now I'm going to zoom out and this uh, sort of like now looks like a fairly decent enough circle so you can work with a mouse and whether as well as a tablet but it's always recommended that you use both mouse and tablet pen for uh, moving points in Photoshop otherwise it takes a lot of time and we don't have time we are short on time <laughs> always it's always a good idea to actually save time now what I'm doing is I'm trying to add uh, color now this is a very wrong approach that sometimes what happens is color actually escapes from the outline now there has to be a way that you can actually add color by constraining the space in the circle so what I can do is I can collect uh, control and click on the inking layer and it actually selects the outline and uh, when I go to the uh, magic wand brush tool it has like this blue, up, blue outline drawn on top of it and when I select or click inside the circle it selects it so if th this thing only happens if the shape is closed otherwise if the shape is not closed this selection will not take place so what I can do is I can deselect the outline I can maybe like start with now the coloring I'll go to the color layer uh, mind you I can show you this again one more time I can select the outside layer if I'm on the color layer but it will not work so I have to be in the vector ink layer to actually select this so I'm going to deselect all of this and I'm going to go on top and deselect this is the deselect button and I'm going to select this again and then I'm going to go into the color layer now the entire region is selected and I'm going to apply the color and see the color is not escaping out of that bounding area so this is a very easy way of actually adding color uh, to a bounded area and it saves up a lot of time and a lot of stress and pressure from the illustrators point of view to have something in a constrained space after that I'm just going to add a highlight for the uh, sphere and I'm just going to try some various uh, brushing uh, versions and oops the brush size is too big maybe I'll bring the pasty down and maybe make it a very sm soft brush airbrush uh, uh, very uh, uh, very focused soft airbrush uh, not uh, the, the spray is not spread out too much okay so now I'm going to add highlights and details shadows and uh, other features so I'm going to start with the base and I'm going to start gradually drawing the details of this shape I'm also going to reduce the density or the best uh, the strength of the brush and uh, the airbrush so that I can get some better results uh, I'm going to increase the size also maybe like make it 20 and uh, let's start working so this uh, this might take a while and uh, it's uh, more of like a feel of how the uh, the spherical ball is uh, facing mind you the light source is coming from the top uh, left portion so that's why the highlights are uh, focused over there and uh, you can see that this ball is now gradually looking three-dimensional in nature I'm going to work some more add some more white highlights maybe uh, add some more uh, brushed airbrush reflections now this uh, is giving it a more a 3d effect but from the base uh, it still looks a little bit flat so we can figure this out we can fix this uh, uh, as we move along now it's looking very three-dimensional now and uh, let's try to add some more detail maybe like uh, add some more colors uh, also 
there's a bl blur tool uh, sometimes uh, if you want to blur some areas I can see that in the middle there's like this very strong highlight and specularity which I do not want I want this thing to be uh, smoothened out so I'm going to smooth this up and uh, I'm not having a very good time with this okay so here I'm I'm, I'm I might be coming close to that smooth uh, smooth uh, uh, circular or um, a spherical look for the ball uh, in the middle of the base and I'm also now going to experiment with like adding some pinks and maybe like add some kind of more highlights so this is uh, giving it a more ref a reflective surface or like maybe a, a translucent transparent surface look I'm going to add some more uh, shadows at the base and this is an ongoing process uh, you keep on adding shadows highlights playing and experimenting with the direction of the uh, light source uh, adding more color uh, uh, maybe adding different color hues just to soften up the spherical ball and uh, it's sort of like is looking more translucent and transparent now so I'm adding a little bit more uh, 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 cerulean or maybe like a, a, a darker, a lighter tone of red. Uh, I'm going to maybe like try adding some more oranges, uh, orange tones or maybe like uh, uh, a yellowish tinge to it and, and there we go. So now what we are looking at is as if the light is actually spreading out and uh, and the light source is white but as soon as it hits the red object uh, red uh, spherical ball it's turning into a uh, slight uh, yellowish tinge and i'm using the blur tool further on and uh, mixing some whites and uh, oranges and i i'm now thinking maybe it it might have some more reflections and let me just check and see if the reflections uh, are suitable because sometimes it happens that uh, there are multiple light sources and I'm trying to like experiment with like different versions of like uh, light sources it's not looking good so m mind you that I'm using these highlights and specularities on the m on the main layer where I'm coloring so you can also use different layers for like uh, uh, creating um, uh, specular effects and shadows but that actually takes a lot of time so I think it's best that a best practice that you do this using just one uh, maybe uh, just one layer uh, color it uh, add specular highlights so I'm now trying to merge these whites with like the overall uh, getup and uh, maybe like have some kind of like uh, brushed or scratchy uh, highlights on the sides and this looks okay I'm now going to add some more orange and yellow and uh, I think okay uh, so I'm, I'm going to try to add some more orange highlights and uh, maybe add them gradually and slowly so it's looking uh, more uh, more more and more flat from the top I'm, I'm going to figure out something maybe like add some more uh, dark reds on the top area maybe like use the blur tool further so it becomes more three-dimensional back and it doesn't look uh, flat from the middle so uh, it's always a good practice also to sometimes zoom out of your drawing so maybe like looking so close uh, at a drawing also sometimes gives you the impression that uh, there's uh, whatever you're doing is wrong and maybe that uh, when you zoom out you look at the whole picture uh, as a whole and you figure out that oh I missed some shadow areas uh, over here on the top uh, left side where the specularity is and maybe I'm now gradually adding more shadow in the, from the base upwards to the orange and it's creating like a, a very subtle three-dimensional effect that uh, the ball is actually spherical so now it's looking much better I'm adding some more blur options and there we go so now it's looking much more clearer much more crisper and I'm also trying to like uh, tone down a little bit or blur out a little bit of the specularity and uh, it's uh, seemed to be, it seems to be working so let's see what else maybe uh, add a little bit of purple uh, into the base yep uh, as soon as you add more purple it creates a more shadow luminescent effect and uh, I, I might try some blues also turquoise and blues in the base of the 
color so that it uh, gives like a reflective tinge uh, but that's i think uh, i think i'll experiment that with the shadow highlights so i'm going to add some uh, more uh, white highlights on the side maybe uh, adds uh, it adds more uh, detail and maybe increase the uh, the 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 temperature of the ball so uh, it looks interesting now if you look at the color sequencing and uh, it sort of like looks like a orangish reddish spear so normally tangerines it's winter so tangerines are in season uh, i think we can turn this into even an apple or a tangerine and depending on what type of color sequencing we go for uh, for now i think uh, it's a little bit about like color correction and maybe we can get it back to uh, reddish orangish sphere uh, and i'm now going to add some more highlights uh, to the uh, top uh, top portion maybe smoothen it out and it's looking more uh, pleasing to the eye now uh, maybe blur out a little bit more of the white specularity and uh, maybe add some more highlights So I'm trying more uh, blur techniques, uh, trying new things. It's always a process. You uh, you do some things, you uh, you add some more color, you add some more detail. Uh, while you're doing that, the entire uh, drawing is not, uh, the color is not bleeding out. So that's also a very good plus thing uh, for you when you're actually painting. Uh, in Photoshop at times it happens that when you're actually created this marquee, uh, 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 marquee, selection around an object color slightly bleeds out when you're doing uh, uh, what you're calling uh, airbrushing uh, in photoshop so uh, there are certain uh, quirks to using sci and there are certain quirks to using photoshop and there are certain disadvantages and advantages of using both so you have to figure out a middle ground so now i'm going to create uh, de deselect the marquee selection tool and it looks fairly three-dimensional in uh, I can still work on it further I'm just trying to figure out the opacity of the outline layer and uh, after that I'm going to create another layer and maybe uh, let's uh, try to add shadows to the base uh, so I'm going to write shadow as the title of the layer and uh, you can always double click layer and change the name so i'm going to choose a darker tone a white brush a white airbrush one i'm just going to figure out the flow of the shadow and i'm now going to slowly and gradually add the shadow highlights and details mind you the base of the apple has to have the maximum amount of shadow so i'm now going to add maximum amount of shadows at the base of the uh, sorry apple uh, the uh, sorry the base of the sphere so now it's looking like it's uh, uh, fairly uh, sitting on a, 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 a flat object or a table or something or a surface flat surface and it's uh, creating some kind of shadow so this is a very interesting point now uh, we are adding some detail to the shadow but i want to actually create some kind of dynamic shadows i, I mean is it really necessary that the objects uh, have to have like black plain bland shadows why can't we have dark shadows like turquoise <coughs> added into it or maybe blues or greens added into the shadows so on the other side the shadows are also emerging from the base of the ball so that it gives like a three-dimensional look to the object and i'm just expanding on the shadow concept uh, i'm also like uh, blurring out some shadow outlines so that it looks like the shadows are soft not, instead of like having hard shadows and i can always like figure out if i want to have hard shadows or soft shadows depending on uh, what the mood is what uh, what the light source is if it's a strong sunlight uh, source uh, so, so the shadows might have like uh, a very hard edge to them and if it's like a studio based uh, so i'm going for a studio based uh, lighting setup in which you have like uh, lights indoors and uh, you can soften the light source by adding some more detail so i'm using the brush um, a brush uh, paint brush to like the uh, 
airbrush tool as well as the uh, blur tool to actually figure out some different variations on the shadows also I actually placed this uh, shadow layer beneath the coloring layer and the inking layer now I'm going to add some blues dark tinges and light tinges of blues maybe even like figure out uh, pick some colors uh, the uh, picking color from uh, the uh, shadow layer is using the alt key and also I'm going to add some shadow uh, some shadows some blue shadows and some blue highlights on the side so that it gives the ball some uh, uh, some more depth and detail and also maybe why not I add this blue tinge or the red color tinge in the reflective region of the shadows so that maybe this the surface on which the sphere is sitting on uh, is also uh, s slightly reflective or specular so like it ha it's slightly smooth and shiny so that it gives like another three-dimensional output to, to the object so I'm now going to uh, after I'm added some shadows and maybe like uh, smoothen out the three-dimensional look of the sphere I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe go for some more yellows and try to it's still not looking three-dimensional as of yet I want to go more three-dimensional so I might add some more yellows so maybe like make it look like the the specular highlights are being spread and extra expanded maybe work on the <coughs> smoothing of the colors it's uh, creating like an edge on the middle side so I'm going to smoothen that out also uh, slightly so that it looks like it has a three-dimensional look <coughs> sorry now I'm coming back to the shadow layer and oops I think I didn't select it so the brush is not working okay so let me deselect it and uh, it's still not working maybe a, a part of the selection okay is selected so I deselected all the selection area and now it's working so now I'm slowly gradually adding more uh, detail to the base of the sphere using the blur tool and the water uh, then using the airbrush tool add more detail and remove more detail add more detail remove more detail so it's an ongoing process but now now yes now it's looking like a detailed shadow from the base and it's blurring out uh, to a blue tinge and smoothening up so uh, I'm fairly close to what I want to achieve and now I'm going to add some red reflections that the ball is exclu uh, excluding from the other side when the light falls on it so this uh, shadow in the base is looking really interesting now and I'm adding blur and I'm like playing around with the with the shadow highlights uh, adding some shadows uh, some reds at the base over here also so that it gives like a shadowy red reflective surface tinge to it so I think I'm really uh, okay with this now it looks good uh, maybe save this file so I'm going to save this file as a sci on the desktop and you can always create a folder uh, in your E drive or C drive and name it as a sci file <coughs> sphere 01 and you save it and uh, I might now uh, take out like a JPEG image so I'm going to before I close it I go to export export as JPEG so this is not going to save this file uh, as a separate file but and then go to that file it's going to export a JPEG file from the existing uh, sci file and you can always export PSD files and then work on those PSD files in Photoshop and there are multiple file versions that you can use so here is the sphere and oops I forgot to write my name so clumsy me so I'm going to create another layer on top of uh, this is going to be a raster layer so I'm going to create another layer you can always you can also use the uh, vector layer but I'm more okay with the raster layer so signature press ok so I'm now going to write my signature on this and uh, after that I think this uh, video will be done so this is typically uh, a sphere and in the next video we will try to turn this uh, we will try to start and turn this video into an apple or, or not this video but the, the sorry the shape 
so this is my signature. It takes me a couple of days because I have been drawing for a few days. So I'm now going to write the date. And I always try to write the date in Urdu. Uh, it's sort of like a thing that I do. Uh, everybody can develop their own signature styles. Um, I prefer to write my name in Urdu and then sign, uh, put the date in the bottom uh, in Urdu. So the, the signature looks uh, fairly big on uh, in the canvas and I'm going to reduce the size so that it doesn't look too vanity-ish that more all my entire signature is on the painting and the painting is not uh, that clearly visible. So the signature looks okay now. Uh, the sizing and the color proportions look okay. I'm going to save this as JPEG uh, or the same copy. Click OK. Now I'm going to open up my uh, Explorer and go to my desktop and see if this image uh, has been converted into a JPEG. So I'm going to go to desktop, sphere and voila. So there you have it. And uh, that's it for this tutorial. Next time we'll come with the, and uh, turn this into an apple. Thank you and bye bye don't forget to follow me